you know, six months to a year, anything new we can expect you want to give a heads up on that's coming out for you guys? A print publication. No kidding. No, yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Damn, you just got you just got me fired up. Uh, maybe. Honestly, everyone who I've talked to who has a print publication has said, if I have one piece of advice for you, do not make a print publication. <laughs> That was Jared Sizu being a little facetious with the future of fly lords. This is episode 164 of the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. We'll help you on your fly fishing journey with classic stories covering steelhead fishing, fly tying, and much more. Hey, how's it going today? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. If you have a company uh, who'd be interested in sponsoring the podcast, you can head over to wetflyswing.com slash ads to find out more. That's uh, A-D-S. Jared Sizu, the founder and leader of Fly Lords, is here to share the story of how he grew one of the largest online magazines into a leader in the fly fishing space from his college dorm. We hear about the seven things you never knew about A River Runs Through It, why you should check out TikTok, and the significance of mosquitoes and mayflies. If you've been loving the podcast, it'd be great if you can head over to lovethepodcast.com slash wetflyswing and leave a quick rating and review. This is a brand new page, and uh, even if you don't leave a review, uh, head over and check it out uh, uh, today. I want to thank you in advance if you have a chance to uh, leave a review. Before we get started, I wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsors. SoFly Gear, headed up by 17-year-old James Carlin of the U.S. Youth Fly Fishing Team, has a buttery soft quick drying apparel line that i've been loving head over to wetflyswing.com slash sofly and support james and the podcast today the fly fishing and tying journal has an exceptional fall edition that's out right now head over to wetflyswing.com slash ftj to support the great work craig and the gang have created just for you Again, that's wetflyswing.com slash FTJ and also wetflyswing.com slash S-O-F-L-Y. So without further ado, here is Jared Sizu from flylordsmag.com. How's it going, Jared? Hey, Dave. It's going well. How are you? Good. Good. Yeah, good to, uh, good to finally get you on here. You're... Uh, the Fly Lord's uh, name is definitely uh, out there, up there, it seems like, with all the, the big heavy hitters these days. I, we're going to dig into some of that. Um, but before we jump into that, can you just talk about, you know, kind of how you got into fly fishing and maybe start wherever you want on your journey? I know I think you had a little, I think college, right, is where it all got started? That's where it started, correct. So, yeah, started my freshman year. I was a... Uh, student at the university of the south a small school in swanee tennessee and i ended up joining a student run volunteer fire department and some of those guys uh would go and fish some local tailwaters on the weekends and um kind of took me under their wing and i just remember it being something that i thought was really cool like the cool guys were going fly fishing on the weekends and um, it ended up turning into a an outlet for me to disconnect from the stresses of college and be out in nature and really like not think about any that was going on, um, in my life. And that, uh, I think that's really where the passion for it, um, grew for me. And, uh, I was always entrepreneurial growing up, both my parents, um, you know, worked on their own businesses, which, uh, inspired me to do it as well. Uh, and Instagram was just kind of exploding at the time and and just growing. So it was kind of right time, right place. So uh, Lords of the Fly book sitting on my kitchen counter and wanted to stop annoying my friends with a million fishing pictures, which I still post today on my personal account. But at the time, it seemed like a good idea to kind of start an Instagram account purely based on sharing, you know, fly fishing stories and stoke and pictures. And it's evolved a number of times and we pivoted at different points in time over the last eight years. But, um, yeah, that's kind of mm-hmm. the, the early beginnings. That's it. And what were your uh, parents? What were their businesses? What were they doing back then? So my mom, uh, used to run a, uh, she still kind of runs it, but it's a, uh, baby company. It was called baby smart. And, uh, she made foam booster seats, um, for, for children, <laughs> uh, really smart, 
woman and very creative. Uh, and then my dad was actually like an immigrant from Romania. Uh, and him and his two parents, you know, saved all as much money as they could and um, ended up, you know, buying a small uh, apartment building in Jersey City uh, oh, wow. and kind of grew it. Uh, a decent real estate business from there. Nothing massive, but um, was always, you know, working for himself. That's cool. Yeah. So you had uh, definitely learned a lot. I mean, when you look at fly Lords and where you've taken it now, I mean, do, what's, is there something that sticks out that you think of your parents, you know, what they kind of taught you that helped you kind of get where you are? Oh, they've been a, a huge part of this journey for me the entire way. They've been so supportive and, you know, good advice all along the way. It's funny. They both give me advice and some of it, you know, you need to choose to listen to and some you learn, you know, to make your own decisions on, but, um, they've both, both been super helpful for me, um, on this journey. That's cool. And, uh, yeah, I was just noted that I, I fly Lords is, uh, the name, you know, it's become, I guess it's so ingrained now, I think, right. You've been 2012, so you're going on Tw- 10 years here but um but yeah lords of the fly right that that movie what what, what do you remember most when you think about uh, or that book or that movie i mean it's just such a unique storyline about these kids running around an island and turning into savages and i don't i don't know if there's anything that like really aligns with what fly fishing is or what fly lords is i think it was really just like a pun on the words that you know, sounded cool and catchy at the time. And I remember it was, it started as, you know, Lords of the Fly and that's still kind of our like sub bot heading. And then Fly Lords was just like a shorter version of that, that I just thought, you know, would stand out a little bit better. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. All right. Well, I want to jump into, you know, a little bit on the, um, I mean, I guess magazine, right? I mean, it is, a, it is an online magazine. Is that, is that how you look at it? And how, how do you look at it differently than say, I mean, I just had Tom buy on recently and he was talking about the Drake and I mean, how do you compare yourself to that? Or how do you look at yourself differently from what the other print magazines are doing? Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. Um, I love the other print magazines. Um, as much as I'm, I'm actually not personally like a big sit down and read a, a long article from start to finish. I'm somebody who likes to grab a magazine and kind of flip, flip through and check out the photos and check out the ads. And, um, but it's, there's something amazing about being able to have something in your hand like that. Um, I was just born in a different generation than, you know, what, where Tom was born and where some of these other print magazines were born. And I was born in a generation where, you know, you go to the bathroom and I don't know why that's the first thing that came to my mind, but you go to the bathroom and you pull out your phone and you're scrolling through Instagram and you're on Facebook and, you know, people are sending you articles. And so that, that was the, that was where I was born and that was where I was consuming, uh, you know, my information. And that was kind of, uh, you know, how, what formed fly Lords and we've got a, 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 kick ass content team and you know multiple people who are under 16 years old that are Mm. writing for us on a monthly basis and they're they're in digital worlds too and they've been born in in this digital world uh in this social world and um i don't know i just think we're we're able to convey the sport through purely digital whether that's videos and photos and articles um and we just have like a, I think a, a different perspective on it because it's not. We do have some like old white guys writing for us also, but it's yeah. not. And I'm not saying that that's all magazines are, but we we do have a, a pretty diverse crew and a, and a young crew that's taking a different um, look at the sport. And um, yeah, I think that's cool. That's it. And yeah, and I and, you know back to Tom By, I think that was a couple things he noted that I remember. You know the fact that. You know, I think some of these magazines, some of the bigger ones, right, it's hard to get in if you want to write for these magazines um, because they have select people. But Tom did mention that he really thinks it's important to bring in, you know, new voices and and new people in there. It sounds like, I mean, how do you balance that when you, I'm sure you've got tons of people send you stuff. Some of it isn't good. Some of it's great. How do you know who to bring on or do you just have your core group of writers? I still remember the first time I submitted an article to the Flyfish Journal and I got an email back and it said, sorry, we're not taking unsolicited entries at this point. And it was something that I worked really hard on. 
Um, and I just remember like looking at the email and just like feeling so, yep. it was like a very weird feeling, but it was, it, it, it definitely made me like want to give opportunities for a lot of people who aren't the professional writers to share their stories. Um, so yeah, you know, anytime there's a, an interesting fish story, it, you know, rarely are we, are we like turning down people's stories unless it's like just crap writing and a crap story. Um, but if people, you know, have a, a great experience catching their personal best, best snook off the beach in Florida. And, um, you know, sometimes we see those photos and see some really cool captions on Instagram and we'll actually reach out and be like, Hey, we love this story. You know, we'd love for you to write something for us. Um, and, and over nine times out of 10, everybody's really stoked to contribute something. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, we've got like a core group of writers that are doing conservation pieces and interviews and news um, and some SEO pieces. And then, you know, we, we want to be a voice for all the anglers and all the guides out there. Yeah. Well, and SEO, what do you mean by SEO pieces? So SEO is us, you know, focusing on, um, driving traffic to our website with search engine optimized, uh, traffic through Google. It gets a little techie, but when you are running it as a business and, you know, you need to drive traffic to your website. Um, there's a lot of value there. So an example for you is if somebody wants to look up best flies for, you know, midge fishing or something like that, you know, our goal is to on Google, our goal is to be the number one ranking article um, that's going to drive organic searches uh, to our website. So we, some of these articles will spend, you know, five, six, seven hours on um, to try to make them as, uh, you know, optimize as possible for the Google algorithms. That's it. And so you have, <laughs> yeah. So I, and I totally understand that space. I actually have another podcast um, where I kind of interview uh, online marketing experts and we've, nice. we've talked about SEO and I just had a guy, uh, Chris Reed, who, has an agency and he, uh, he, you know, does just that. And, uh, yeah, it's a struggle for a lot of a company. I mean, people definitely, they're listening to this. There's lots of, you know, fly companies that are listening that probably struggle with their website and maybe don't feel like they have 1500, 3000, you know, thousands of dollars to spend on SEO. But from your perspective, uh, you know, you probably feel like it's worth the money finding somebody that does it right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's slow and steady and it's just kind of, meeting with our teams and making sure they're stoked and incentivized. And, um, I don't know, there's no like rush to the finish line or there's no cheat codes or shortcuts to building, a, you know, a, a website that has a lot of traffic or, or good SEO, um, you know, results. Yeah. And, and you highlighted the SEO there mainly because, um, that's just part of your business because you were talking about kind of the uh, different writers and stuff. Is that, is that you just note that because that's part of the business you guys do you teach or you do to service you provide? Yeah, we do do some SEO work for, for some other brands in the industry and, and some lodges. Um, but we do, you know, a lot of it's just kind of us teaching ourselves and getting people who really know what they're, what they're doing and um, you know, optimizing our site with, um, specific articles that are going to do well. Gotcha. Okay. And yeah, I was looking at one of the articles. I just searched on your site for dry fly fishing because we're uh, in a dry fly se season now, even though it's not necessarily everything isn't all dry flies, but an article popped up, I think, oh, a couple of them popped up. But what you're saying is, uh, well, let's just look at one of them. If, if I was to say dry fly fishing, because it's kind of interesting to think, um, you know, what, what are we going to see at your site? And, you know, for, so the first one that pops up is back in July 2019, dry fly fishing tips and techniques. So there's a good example, right? There's a, of your SEO. You've got a good title. And the article is by, um, well, it says by Patrick Berry, but I think it was written by uh, Michael, um, somebody else. But can you talk about maybe, I don't know, are you, do you know all your articles or is there stuff that just comes into your, your team is you don't even see it? No, yeah, I've seen this. And this is a good example. Like if you go, if you search on Google, try fly fishing, this will be like one of the top five or six results. Um, and yeah, I mean, at some point in a meeting, it probably came up like, you know, we should put together a guide for dry fly fishing and midge fishing and nymph fishing. And, yeah. you know, a lot of time and research goes into figuring out how 
we can put together something that's going to add the most value to our readers um, and then sourcing the content for them. And so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pieces that go into it. And um, this is a good example of something that we're definitely taking into consideration, um, you know, SEO here. Yeah. No, I love it. And we are kind of getting a little off on the nerdy side. I could, I could always edit this out, but, uh, it, it, you know, it's interesting because when I look at the article, I mean, it's definitely got lots of beautiful pictures, um, you know, and you got your, your highlighting everything, but it really, it doesn't have, you know, there's no videos, there's no, um, other, you know, diagrams or anything. It's just kind of straight up. It just shows you, you can literally with a, a good, uh, article with information and, uh, you got your H2 tags and good photos that you can rank it high on Google just with that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we probably should go back in and say, like, what are the articles that are beating us out here? Yeah. Um, and I'm sure we could add some diagrams and photos and backlinks to this article are always valuable. And yeah, um, so, yeah, I mean, there's always work to be done. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to get carried away here and make it seem like this is all we cover is like ways to drive more traffic to our website. You know, majority of our content is trying to add value to our readers, whether it's news, conservation, yeah. angler spotlights, all those other categories, we're not, we're, we're not focusing on SEO. No, no. Th- and that's why I, I just brought that because you mentioned it and I was kind of thinking like, well, you know, SEO got mentioned as you were kind of talking about, right, your site. And that, that was why, that was kind of interesting for me that you, but maybe I was kind of thinking something differently. You mentioned it mainly because it's just part of your, your brand. Yeah. I mean, I think every business should uh, take it into consideration. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Cool. Well, yeah, you got tons of stuff and I had lots of questions on other, you know, your kind of food travel, you got these interviews, you got videos, you got all sorts of stuff. I mean, who is, when you think of Flight Lords, I mean, like your target, uh, you know, reader, who is that person? Do you have a picture in your mind of who you're, because you, you talk about having young people and you got a mix, but is it, are there old people listening? Is there young? Who is that person? You know, it, it's actually like, a broader age range than you'd expect. It definitely started young and majority of our audience is probably in that like 20 to 40 year old range. Um, you know, there's not a ton of kids like 18 or younger. There's not a big audience in the fly fishing space. And that's something we do want to grow and we do want to try to inspire those kids. And that's why we're on, you know, TikTok. Yeah. Um, but we do also have, you know, 60 and 70 year old guys that randomly will be like, mention something about our newsletter so they might just subscribe to our newsletter um maybe they don't even follow us on instagram um, but yeah i mean so there's definitely some diversity there gotcha and what when you look at everything you know that you have there you've got you know you kind of cover it all gear salt water i mean are there is there certain uh, sections that are kind of the most viewed or the most the most popular at your site that's a good question. And, and these tabs have like evolved and they always evolve. And it's like, how do we expand a little bit of out of fly fishing, but still remain like true to our audience and our, you know, our identity. So that's where like the travel and the food and the outdoor and wanting to cover some of, some more of that stuff. Like I think in the future, we'd like to see us expand and do some more food stuff. Um, interviews have always been a really powerful thing for us that have driven traffic um, we, you know, we've done this like faces of fly fishing series where we'll, we're in, we'll interview, you know, people that are iconic figures in the sport. Um, we have conservation is, is something that's super important to us in general and educating our audience. You know, we've got a, a, a few writers that are dedicated to um, highlighting nonprofits and highlighting, you know, important initiatives that are going on uh, in our community. That's it. And and with that conservation, do you find, I mean, you must track um, the analytics and stuff there. Do, do you find that uh, some of the conservation, we've talked about this a number of times, but some of those conservation articles don't get quite the views as maybe something that, uh, you know, is a little more popular? Oh, I mean, they some of them do really well. But, you know, when you write an article about seven things that you never knew about, a river runs through it and yeah. it hits and it hits a vein and gets shared, you know, a bajillion times because everybody loves that movie, it's going to drive more traffic than, you know, this fish kill in Pennsylvania that's, you know, happened. Um, It's just a, yeah, I mean, that's just part of the game. Just the way it is. Yeah. Well, let's uh, stay on, just uh, stay on that dry flight. I'm interested because to get a picture of your, you know, especially for somebody who maybe hasn't dug into your stuff. So if somebody comes to this and they're fairly, you know, 
done a little bit of dry fly fishing, but they're kind of struggling. You know, they don't know where to maybe start and way to improve. Where would you send them on your site? You know what I mean? Do you guys have, do you focus it that much where you can just say, you know what, go to this, this little resource guide and that sort of thing? Or have you guys not dug, you know, I'm just trying to get a perspective on how your site's set up. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's my, the site is like built so that if you like fly fishing, if you enjoy fly fishing, you can come here on a weekly basis or on a daily basis. You know, you go to our homepage, you're going to see interviews with anglers. You're going to see the latest conservation stories in the industry. You're going to see original content that we're shooting and we're creating. Um, you're going to see tips for this time of the year. You're going to see gear guides. You're going to see, you know, all sorts of interesting things. So I think, you know, we want to be a go-to place where if you are passionate about this sport, whether it's daily or weekly, you can come to our website and just like kill 20 minutes and or 30 minutes or five minutes or two minutes and just kind of see what's going on. Is there a new gear review that came out? Yeah. You know, did Orbis come out with a new rod? Um, you know, let's check out the story about this guide who is down in the keys and maybe I'll book a trip with him. Yeah. Um, if you want to like get a little more specific, you know, we've got our categories up there so you can go fly fishing, you know, tips, fly tying, winter gear, saltwater, freshwater, or you can go into the search bar and just type in, you know, dry fly, which is probably what you did. Yep. And you know, there's, I mean, we've got 32 pages here of articles, um, that have dry fly in the name. I mean, not that they all are going to be what you're looking for, but, um, there should be some stuff in there that that would be interesting for you. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you know, this is another interesting thing, you know, like, like you mentioned, uh, you know, fly fisher. I mean, I've interviewed a number of editors of magazines and, um, now and we, there's been a big broad range of different experiences right um tom by we mentioned um john shuey i mean those guys have backgrounds in uh, journalism and others you know like swing the fly magazine and you know um there's no background there i mean what what's your background like as far as journalism do, do you have experience there or have you is this like more of a self-taught thing yeah i think it's just my background is being able to communicate and build a team of, of, uh, talented folks who, you know, are conservation writers pre law and he's working in Washington right now on one of the campaigns. Uh, and you know, we'll write up two articles for us per month on conservation. And we've got guys who are, you know, guides out in Colorado or they're, family has been owned a fly shop for 20 years um that write for us on certain things so for me it's not about like my journalistic skills um it's more about bringing together a a community and a group of folks who are passionate about the sport and knowledgeable about what they're writing about and then organizing it into something that um works well for our visitors gotcha so you bring on so basically you have these high quality writers. And I think that is, you know, as the editor, I think Shuey mentioned that when he was on, um, you know, the Northwest fly fishing magazine, that, 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 that series. And he said, you know, some of the stuff, uh, the editor has to do, he does quite a bit of work to, to bring some of the stuff that maybe is, isn't that great up. But I mean, do you find that, uh, when you get something that, you know, you must get right. Some of that, some of these new people that come in and it's like, well, how do you deal with that when it's kind of not the greatest, uh, do you actually turn people down or do you, do you give them hit, uh, tips or how, how do you deal with that? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's definitely times where we'll get a piece that's just not great writing and not great photos. And, you know, we'll just kindly let them know that it's, it's not um, the best fit for our publication. Gotcha. So you basically, yeah, you've, you just kind of, you have to turn things down and you're not going to necessarily walk someone through it, it is. It's interesting because it's a tough I've heard it before, but it's a, a uh, it's a, it's a challenge, and I think, well, and also again, we're talking a lot about the, you know the, the Drake and Tom, but I just it was such a recent episode, you know, he said that was the difference between the print mags and the online mag, the online stuff, um, the fact that to get into print, it's a little bit higher bar, so maybe you have a, you know, maybe a higher level. What what would you say to that? Do you think there's some truth to that, or do you guys feel? Yeah, like- I think there's truth to that. I think there's. I think we cover stories that are just as strong as a as a story that's written in in some of these magazines, and and we'll pay for them. 
Um, and we shoot a lot of content ourselves and write a lot of um, editorial pieces ourselves from our team internally. Um, so I do think that there's certain pieces that are of the same caliber of a, of a print magazine. And mm-hmm. um, will I say that the, the overwhelming majority of the articles we're publishing are the same quality of the overwhelming majority of a print publication? No, I think that you're correct where they're paying for the writers, they're paying for the photos. Um, a lot of our content is, is, is news that we're sourcing or stuff that we're writing ourselves. Um, so yeah, there's definitely going to be a, a, ch- a change there. And uh, I think there's hopefully room for, for both sides of that um, in the equation. And now a quick word from our sponsors. The Fly Fishing and Tying Journal has a great fall edition that's out right now. You can find Lucas Stevens, who visits Winston Fly Rods in the fall edition, for an insider look and a rare interview with Ted Leeson. Patrick Wall pays homage to Harry Lemire's tied in hand Atlantic salmon flies. Boots Allen takes us to the pond with a master class in still water. Dennis Daba also travels to Scotland in search of uh, salmon. Good to have him uh, him on here. I'd love if you could stop by uh, right now and uh, just press pause. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash FTJ and subscribe to the magazine. You'll get that issue delivered to your door. That's wetflyswing.com slash FTJ. We are also supported by SoFly Gear, led by Chief Apparel Guru and Team USA Youth Fly Fishing member, James Carlin, who has a great clothing line that you're definitely going to love. SoFly's mission is to produce clothes that look good, perform well, and can be worn on and off the water. Plus, uh, most importantly, are manufactured uh, with under sustainable methods. They do this with bamboo. Bamboo is a, this shirt has a great mixture. I've been wearing it it, all around. It dries quick. It stays warm. It's soft. uh, It's it's good to go. Pretty amazing stuff. You got to check it out. So um, if you can, you can head over to wetflyswing.com slash SoFly and get started today. Uh, That'll help support uh, James and the podcast in one shot. That's wetflyswing.com slash S-O-F-L-Y. Okay, back to the show. You know, Orvis, right? You, you had a little short uh, stint, I think, with Orvis. Um, but just thinking about, you know, not only Orvis, but, you know, other, I guess, your competition. I mean, how do you look at that? Because there's, you know, there's the, uh, like, Moly Chum. I mean, there's a bunch of magazines that are kind of in your same space, right? They're, they're kind of like print. They're like online magazines. How do you compete with them or how do you look at all that? And, and you know, and, yeah. I, and, what, and, and what did you learn from Orvis? Sure. So, um I interned at Orvis my junior year of college and I learned a ton. I was up in Manchester, Vermont, sitting next to Phil Monahan and Tom Rosenbauer for the whole summer. And, um, I was the intern and once again, like Instagram, they were just starting to like dabble into it and I was running it and helping, uh, source evergreen content for the website. And, um, I learned so much that summer and a lot of it I was able to apply to you know what I built with fly lords after that um there's some great other websites out there um gink and gasoline moldy chum uh mid currents is great um you know angling trade so there's there's a ton of other websites out there that do a great job um are the differences we're you know Flylers is is essentially a, a production company, uh, you know, as a part of as an extension of uh, the media face, uh, and so we, you know, we're shooting content and shooting videos for a lot of brands out there and a lot of stories that we're covering ourselves. Um, and I think that the fact that we're able to create such high quality content ourselves um, definitely uh, differentiates us a little bit. Uh, and then we've also, you know, we've got a really strong presence on social media. Uh, and so, you know, our Instagram alone is driving five times as much traffic as, as us or, or even these other, um, these other blogs. Um, so a lot of our time and attentions focused at, uh, telling stories through, um, social platforms uh, and Instagram's definitely, you know, a, a powerhouse, um, for, for us with that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You guys are up in the over whatever it is. Yeah. 225 K range or something like that. Um, are there other, um, platforms, you know, other than Instagram, I mean, you guys are doing a lot on, are you doing much on Facebook, Twitter, anything else out there? Well, you mentioned the, the Snapchat, right? 
Facebook strong for us. Um, our newsletter strong. Uh, TikTok, we have eighty thousand followers on TikTok. Um, so that's uh, been an interesting one, and and I'm interested to see how that app evolves. Uh, you know, going into the future. Um, what else? Uh, we're on Twitter a little bit. Um, you know, all in all, between all of our channels, uh, when we add that together, we're you know reaching uh, around two million unique anglers uh, on a monthly basis. But or, you know, between all of our channels, just doing everything. And what is just briefly a TikTok for some some old people, you know, some older people out there that, you know, they, they hear TikTok. And I'm not sure was TikTok the one that Trump was trying to get rid of. Or I can't remember. If that, yes. Yeah. That so was the one Trump that, was trying to get rid of. That was of. the one TikTok. So hey, just briefly, what? How is TikTok different from say Instagram or anything else out there? TikTok is a short form video platform that is still pretty young. I think they're like maybe two years old. I'm probably botching that, but they've definitely become the, you know, super popular in the last year. And um, Instagram's actually adapted similar to what they did with Snapchat. Um, They kind of adapt to what these other apps are feeding on for success. Um, So that's when Instagram launched Instagram Reels. So they're basically vertical formed short videos that get paired with music, super popular and a very young, uh, you know, demographic, a lot of dancing. Um, it's a weird place. Hmm. Uh, it's probably not the best place to be, you know, advertising fly fishing, but, um, you know, uh, a 10 second clip of 90 year old Joe Humphreys, uh, hooking into a trout in Pennsylvania got 13 million views on it. So, wow. Uh, it's stuff like that where it's, you know, it's cool to be trying everything out, um, which yeah. we like to do. And you're a big fan of the, um, oh, uh, why am I drawing a blank? Who's the big, uh, so- uh, Gary Vandercheck, right? You're a Gary V. Gary V. Gary V. He's not the be everywhere guy, but he, he kind of is, right? He he says you should be testing out like everything, right? Is that his? his Gary V. is uh, he's a character. When you think of Gary V, because I think he maybe takes a, a hit from some people. They think, you know, he's too extreme like you know you gotta you gotta work 20 hours a day and don't sleep and you know like as opposed to more laid back for i mean what is gary v what's one thing he's taught you yeah he's a he's a character he's him him, me and my dad have been following him for a long time and um wine library (laughs) wine library exactly um but yeah he's just you know he's a go-getter he's a grinder and i think you know, he's, he did have a book called like jab, 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 punch. And yeah. I don't know, there's, there's a few, every once in a while, you know, five or 10% of the stuff he says will, will, you know, land home and it might just be a little bit of uh, incentive to push through the end of your week and, and grind yeah. a little harder. And I don't think I've had anything where it like changed the way that I was going to build my business uh, because of something that Gary V said, but yep. he's a character. That's cool. Cool, man. Well, uh, you know, there's obviously a ton of stuff we could sit here all day and talk about, you know, the content you guys have. But I think we got a, a pretty good perspective on what you do. I mean, basically, if somebody's new to it and they want to get maybe a, a new, uh, you know, a new tip, a new gear guide, um, they can kind of jump in and just keep up with you. Where would you, you know, if people want to follow you, I guess Instagram's a good place. Um, do you have like a newsletter you guys work on too? Yeah. So we send out a weekly newsletter. Instagram at fly Lords is a great spot. Um, you know, if I tell people who are just getting into fly fishing, just throw us a follow, you know, we run that with different stories every single day. Um, that's another great spot. You can sign up for our newsletter, um, on our website on the very top, it says newsletter, or if you scroll down, there's usually, um, a few areas, uh, where you can subscribe. And when they get in your, you know, say I was to go there right now, and actually I think I am on your newsletter, but, you know, once you subscribe, um, you know, what can they expect? Are they getting a weekly, like a once a week email sort of thing with the update? What do they get in those emails? Yeah, so we call it This Week in Fly Fishing, and it's basically like 10 or 12 articles that we worked on in the past week, usually the stuff that we want to share the most, and it's everything from fish stories, angler stories, conservation stories, videos, fly tying, you know, we try to cover it all. And, um, yeah, that's what we call it, you know, this week in fly fishing. It's like, what's, what's the latest going on, uh, in the sport. 
Gotcha. How much are you are you publishing uh, like on a weekly basis? How many new articles? Or I guess you have videos too. But um, you know, how much content are you publishing each week? It's a lot, uh, and we're trying to maybe not have it be as much and just a little bit higher quality. That's something that we've continued to work towards. Um, I'd say we're doing. Geez, I don't even know what the what the number looks like right now. Somewhere yeah. between like somewhere around 40 or 50 pieces, maybe more, maybe 60 per, um, per month per month. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing like yeah. roughly so yeah, two or three, two or three a day on, on, it honestly might be a little bit more than that, but yeah. I'll, uh, sure. I don't know off the top of my head. Oh yeah. That's still a lot. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Even, even one a day is, is a lot, right? Yeah. And, and that's, again, it's like, it's not like, a, it's not like you're coming to read like one person's voice. Um, and his opinions on things or two editors voices or three editors voices. It's, it's a team of, you know, there's 20, 25 people, there's guides, there's, it's just, it's a, it's a mismatch of, you know, different things. Um, it's not, you're not coming to read like just one person's opinion on everything. Gotcha. Are there some people on there that are, you know, I think of some of the guests I've had on in the past, I've had some pretty, you know, big names, big people that in the, I mean, do you have any names that stick out that are uh, contributors or is it more like a mix of, of people we might not have heard about? Yeah, a lot of, there's, there's a lot of really great names and there's a lot of people um, with bigger names that we've done interviews with. Um, and I think that's like a nice way we like to connect with some of these like celebs. Mm-hmm. Um but I mean, who comes to mind? We just had like Monty Burke do a piece for us last week. Um, he's a, a phenomenal writer. Um, he's done some really cool books. Definitely recommend checking him out. Um, trying to think who yeah. else. A lot of people. There's a lot of people. Yeah. Well, know, we, great names. And we, great we, can guys ser- and- we can search through it and check it out. On those interviews, do you, are these kind of interview? how, how does the interview work? Is this a, like a blog post? Yeah. So we haven't really dived into podcasts, um, even though that is like a digital realm that I think we should be in. Um, but it's all been like written, you know, written and, and then distributed on Instagram. And that's just cause like those, that's where we have the most eyeballs. So we're really trying to like cater these stories to a, a social audience. Yeah. Okay. And I was just looking, just to hit on the video piece, because I know you guys do a lot there. I just want to touch on, do you, do you remember the mosquitoes and mayflies uh, video you guys had? Yes. Can you, and I just picked that one out, I guess that maybe came up on the dry fly search, but I'm curious, can you talk about that video, how that came to be, just to give us an idea of some of the videos you guys have out there? Do you, did you ever watch that? No, I didn't. I just looked, it looked interesting though. It was a guy back in the Europe, right? Yeah. So mosquitoes and mayfly was a collaboration of with uh, us and this filmmaker uh who's based in sweden named rolf nylander uh and he's an absolute legend i definitely recommend checking out his youtube um his youtube page this was basically just a collaboration between us this isn't um you know something that we went out and produced um a good example of something that we went out and produced would be um, so they, we shot a three part series in Australia last year with tourism, Australia, and, um, there's three kind of three to five minute videos. Uh, and I think it's a good showcase of kind of like pulling together the articles, the photos and the video into like a really, uh, uh, versatile story about, you know, going and fly fishing in Australia. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll check that out. I'll put a link in the show notes as well to that. Um, so, uh, yeah, now, you, as you were thinking, you know, obviously influencer marketing, you, I, it was funny because today there's an episode on my other podcast, um, Cloris Kylie, who's an influencer marketing expert, we talked um, about, you know, what, what influencer marketing is, right? And you guys are obviously an influencer when you look at social media. And I think a lot of people think of that as influencer marketing where, you know, find somebody with 200,000 you know, followers and get them to give you a shout out. But it's more, she talked about how it's way more than that. It's about, you know, building a relationship and stuff like that. If somebody wanted to connect with you, um, what would be the best way for them to, if they wanted to, I guess they could submit something to you, but are there other tips you would give them to maybe uh, provide value for your, your audience out there? Yeah. I mean, if you, if you've got a cool story for us, if you think, uh, if you're a brand that wants to work with us, if you're somebody who wants to, you know, write for us or connect with us or t- chat with us, 
reach out. You know, we like to try to get back to everybody. And um, in terms of the influencer marketing thing, that's that's an interesting conversation. Um, we've actually worked on evolving out of the influencer space. And from the beginning with Fly Lords, it was never about my face in there and, and what fish I caught or what fish the rest of our team caught. Um, it's been about stories of the community. Uh, and I think that's what differentiates us from an influencer. We're a media company uh, that just has a, a very strong social presence, which I think um, any media company that's uh, working with brands should have a strong social media presence. Yep. Yep. And I'm just looking, scrolling down through your, um, this is your team, right? And are these, so on the team, is this, is this your core group of pretty much your your writers and or, or who is this core team yeah so this team needs to be updated a little bit but it does give you a decent idea of who who our team is it actually does look pretty up to date right now um yeah i mean this is our this is like the core of our team on our content team that we're meeting with on a bi-weekly basis and then beyond this we've got you know freelance editors and videographers and photographers and um you know, the content creation side of what we do with Flylers is, you know, just as big as the content that we're distributing. And that's what brands like. To, that's why they like to work with us is because, you know, we're able to create the content for them. And then we're also able to distribute it. And we've been, you know, in the space for long enough where we know how to create authentic uh, stories and content. You know, GoPro um talk about that so you got this gopro ad how how does that like um how does that happen yeah so gopro reaches out to us and said hey guys we like what you're doing um we've got this new product coming out this september and you know we want to know if you have any ideas for a a partnership that we can work on together Uh, and those are the types of conversations that we love because then we sit down with our team internally and pull out the whiteboard and put up a bunch of creative ideas. You know, this is how I think we can highlight this product, you know, through this article and this ad budget and these photos, and this video and this Instagram story that's going to swipe up to this part on your website. And, it, you know, they're super complex, but we really enjoy like putting together these creative ideas. And then we build it into a deck and we pitch it to them and we get on the phone with them. Uh, and, and that's what I love about what we're doing is we're coming up with creative ideas and we're finding ways to add value to these brands. And then we're also finding ways to add value to our audience, uh, by sharing something interesting. And, you know, any time we work with a brand, we want to make the story as cool as possible so that it doesn't feel like it's getting sold to our, to our audience. Exactly. And that's, that is the challenge, yeah, because you don't want it to feel like an ad. I mean, first of all, I say on that, the GoPro coming to you is got to be a good feeling because, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that, that are probably going out to GoPro, right, and going out and they're trying to get them on, but they're actually coming to you. So that's that's a win, right? That's a great thing. But I also think of, you know, you have a big challenge ahead of you, and I talked about this previously um, also, but, you know, Casey Neistat, are you familiar with him? He's the yes. yeah, YouTuber, right? He's this huge, he's got whatever, 10, 20 million followers, subscribers. But, um, you know, he had this Nike, I think it was one of his big commercials um, that he did for Nike. And Nike came to him and same thing and said, hey, we, we love what you're doing. Could you produce something? And, and he had this thing set up by Nike. They said, all right, here's the, here's kind of what we want. And, you know, in the middle of it, he said, he said, basically, I'm going to go make my own thing. And he used all the money that Nike gave him and traveled the world and made the video about him traveling as many countries as he could in like a couple of weeks and went back to Nike and said, here's your video. And it was nothing like they wanted, but you know, it's probably got a bazillion views now and, and Nike, it worked. So, I mean, talking about that story, how, when you talk up GoPro, I mean, how do you, you know, how do you stay within the bounds of their thing, but not make it boring? I mean, GoPro is a good company, so it's probably easier, but how, how, speak to that a little bit. Yeah, I think we've been doing this long enough that a lot of the times these other brands allow us the opportunity to come up with our own ideas. And whether that's us 
finding stories about unique people and finding a creative way to get that brand involved. Um, we've been fortunate, you know, to be in this very niche space that, you know, we can identify a good story. Um, and I think that's one of our strengths. Uh, and, and a lot of times these pitch decks will have three, four, five ideas, and maybe it's one that we really want to push. Um, and yeah, so we try to give them ideas and then it's, uh, it's like any business, you know, you're working with the, you know, the brand to make sure they're happy. Uh, and then you're also working to make sure you're not, um, jeopardizing your audience and their, you know, opinion of, of you as a publication. So you, you do need to juggle both of those things. And, um, at the end of the day, we'd rather turn down money to keep our readers happy and, yep. you know, dedicated to, to what we're doing. That's it. Is the GoPro, is there actually like a video you guys produce for them? Is that the, uh, is that the big part of it? Yeah. So the, we did a, uh, like a three minute video for them. We did an interview with the videographer that we brought on the project. Um, so an article here says behind the scenes, the, the video is called this place sucks, which is kind of like, a pun on blowing up a fishery, <laughs> but, oh, yeah. um, huh. the inter we interview, you know, a videographer uh, that worked with us on the project and we, you know, talk to him about using all the different gear. And, um, that's a good example. Uh, if you go to that article of like what one of these activations look like, and this, this will get ad budgeted and distributed to even more people. And then the whole story and, and everything goes live on our Instagrams. So we're able to kind of track, the views and everything for the brand. Gotcha. So that's, and that's how you do it. So the, what, um, you know, what GoPro gets is they get to connect with a more into the fly fishing audience, which is, uh, which is cool. Right. I'm not sure. I don't see, well, I guess GoPro's out there pretty much. I mean, who, who else is out there? Uh, that's who's GoPro's competition. iPhone. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's it. Um, I mean, yeah, I watched like the new iPhone 12, release i felt like i was like getting sold like crack or something that's like been an inside joke with some friends but yeah um yeah i mean wild the the camera capabilities and those things things are wild and it'll be interesting to see how gopro continues to evolve in the future and you know they're a strong brand and the the zeus mini light is super cool that they came out with so i think they're trying to come out with unique products that are helpful for um, more, more things than just shooting a video. Gotcha. What, what, um, I'm looking at the drift boat. What is that drift boat in the, in the video? I believe it's a stealth. Craft. Yeah, that's a stealth. Craft. Yeah, it's stealth. Craft. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, um, and what in that river, where is that? That's some, do you know where that is? The green river? It's top, top secret. Yeah. Yeah. Green. It says green river no, right I'm there. Kidding. <laughs> green river <laughs> yeah green river so so it's cool in self I'm, I'm actually doing a uh like a mini mini series i'm just developing on drift boats kind of the history of drift boats so i got nice. yeah so stealth awesome. craft is one of the companies i haven't connected with yet but i'm i've uh Good. I, I had their founder um well you know uh their their founder uh gosh you, you, do you find that yourself you're, you're a little younger how old are you i'm 28 yeah you're 28 so you're a lot younger than me but I find that, um, you know, eventually, you know, the eyesight starts going to the, the memory, but man, I've interviewed so many people and so many freaking like, sometimes I just have one of those moments where I'm like, wow, you know what I mean? You just don't totally, do, do you ever have any of those moments where you've got all this content and you don't remember exactly a name or a, a something? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff. It's been, uh, a lot of, a lot of people and trips and photos. And so, yeah, I definitely, uh, have had a few of those moments. Gotcha. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, anything else before we get out of here, um, you know, that we miss? I know we've kind of had a, this has been fun for me. It's kind of been a general perspective. I mean, do we have a pretty good feel for what Fly Lords is about or anything you want to add? Yeah. I think the last thing I'd add is, you know, something that's really been driving home with us in this last year is kind of like, honestly, even more recently than that in the last like couple months is kind of a adjustment to our mission statement. Um, and it's something that going forward, we really want to work hard on, um, pursuing. Um, and it's basically, you know, our goal is to grow the sport of fly fishing, uh, and, and inspire new people to get out on the water and, and 
you know, become passionate about this sport. And the reason that that's our goal is because ultimately we want more people who are going to be advocates for our fisheries and advocates for our environment. And fly fishing is a wonderful way to introduce people to the outdoors and educate them about what's going on and why, you know, that fish population that they're fishing to the next year is, is declining and how they can make an impact and how they can support local communities. So I think that's a super important mission for us, especially moving into next year. Um, and yeah, I guess that's the last thing I, I just wanted to add, cool. add in. Well, it's funny when you say that because that is pretty much, uh, <laughs> I think our exact mission statement. I mean, it's safe and it should be, it should be any surprise, right? Because there's a lot of fly fishing companies that are out there that are thinking the same thing, right? That, that you just said, the more people you get involved, the more eventually, even if they're not conserv- conservation minded now, they probably will be eventually. And so I think that is, um, yeah, that's a great place to leave off in the next, um, you know, six months to a year, anything new we can expect you want to give a heads up on that's coming out for you guys? A print publication. No kidding. No, yeah, I'm just kidding. Really? <laughs> Damn, you just got you just got me fired up. Uh, maybe. Honestly, everyone I've talked to who has a print publication has said, if I have one piece of advice for you, do not make a print publication. <laughs> oh, they said do not. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna say that wh- who I think of is um, of the Dunn Magazine, right? Uh, Jen Ripple. She mm-hmm. she started just. Um, Let's see. Now, did she start? Yeah, she started with the uh, the online version, and then eventually came out with the print magazine. But now, with all everything going on, she's kind of like, well, maybe we're going to pause this thing. And she's not too worried about it because of all the online stuff. Yeah, I think people underestimate the amount of time and money that goes into making those publications. And I'm sure there's people better than me to talk to it about. But yeah, um, yeah, I think we're just going to focus on. Um, really trying to just tell great stories digitally and um i'd love to do a podcast you know we're so busy with production and then keeping all this rolling and keeping all the companies happy we work with that it's just it, we haven't had time to sit down and do it but i'd love to maybe make that a goal for for this winter totally yeah go for it yeah and if you have any questions definitely check back with me i've had a, a ton of a podcasting experts on the other show and, and we've talked through it and stuff and yeah or if you wanted to maybe we could talk about uh you know collaborating on something down the line too and you know as we get into this but um yeah man hey i appreciate you coming on and sharing um you know a little bit of the the background on fly lords and uh obviously you guys are killing it out there so keep up the good work and, and i'll keep in touch with you thank you so much appreciate you for uh, having me on today so there you go. If you want to find all the show notes with all the links we covered, just go to wetflyswing.com slash 164. I'd love if you can uh, go to uh, lovethepodcast.com slash wetflyswing and leave a quick rating and review for the show. I wanted to read a quick rating uh, and review from Oregon Duck 7 from the United States. Five stars, the best fly fishing podcast on the internet. Great guests and provocative topics. Uh, thank you, Oregon Duck 7. I really appreciate you for taking the time uh, to leave a review and to leave your support. That's all I have for you today. If you get a chance, please subscribe at your favorite app to make sure the next podcast episode is delivered right to your phone. And I want to thank you again uh, today for stopping by to check out the show. I am looking forward to maybe seeing you online or on the river. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com. And if you found this episode helpful, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes.